Hey everyone, hope everyone's doing okay and staying safe these days. So a little curiosity has brought me to make this uh, somewhat short video over here and uh, have seen some success uh, from other YouTubers and also noticing some online uh, forums and whatnot saying that this particular CPU, first generation Ryzen CPU, in this case I have a 1700 over here. I also have a 1500 on another computer, but I'll definitely mention that another time. And does it actually work on more modern motherboards, chip base uh, chipsets? And basically what I got here is the MSI Gaming Edge motherboard X570 chipset over here. Now technically this, uh, this chipset here should actually be supporting second, third, and of course fourth generation Ryzen CPUs. Of course one limitation it does have, it does not support first generation, which Many people will say, eh, it's not a big deal. The CPU came out in 2017 anyway. So it's already been, um, what, now four, four and a half years since it came out, I would say in the uh, springtime, 2017. So lo and behold, I have seen online that some people have actually had some success with X570 based chipset motherboards by MSI in this case. Decided to go ahead and throw in my 1700 onto one and guess what? As you can see up here, Believe it or not, it is actually working. 1700 eight core processor. And um, you know, obviously there's some uh, basic memory over here, so nothing too special. CPU uh, temperature is not crazy or anything. Motherboard temperature is pretty stable. And I uh, have to be honest, everything appears to be working pretty well. I have booted into Windows 10 a number of times already, and it is uh, working pretty solid. As a matter of fact, why don't we go ahead and just uh, give it a reboot right now. This is actually something I really was not expecting, but something I was actually hoping for. I do have some family members with uh, first gen uh, Ryzen CPUs right now. Actually, the same CPU is 1700. And uh, it is actually nice to be able to upgrade them to a newer chipset based uh, motherboard and you know, actually keep the same CPU. Now, what's the benefit of that? Well, I'll be honest, not too much. Um, besides a couple of options you might inherit. Um, such as onboard Wi-Fi and some other options that a newer chipset motherboard may have. Bear in mind, even though X570 does support Gen uh, PCIe Gen 4, so obviously you know you'll get those really mighty speeds from uh, the 980 uh, Pro SSD. That is actually controlled by the CPU itself, so you will actually not be able to really take advantage of speeds like that with uh, this particular CPU or even a second gen CPU, third or fourth gen. Will support that for you so you can actually see here windows 10 is working pretty solid booted up pretty uh fairly quickly um pulse time is actually reduced with a newer chipset based motherboard but you know hardly a few seconds really in um, merits such a purchase or an up upgrade without upgrading the cpu itself so here we go definitely much better recording here doing on-screen recording i went ahead and brought up task managers so you actually see the CPU here and all its 8 core 16 thread glory and also CPU Z over here so I can actually show you some details um, Obviously a bunch of details here of the CPU specs you're probably very familiar with from a couple of years ago Obviously a lovely little uh, Ryzen uh, 8 core CPU at 65 watts and over here we click on mainboard You will actually see the MPG X570 gaming edge Wi-Fi motherboard. I have seen that other motherboards have had success with uh, using first-gen Ryzen processors. Uh, and I believe that will include the Gaming Pro Carbon and also the one of the higher tiers, um, Meg ACE motherboards, which is actually one of the boards I actually use myself on my secondary PC. Growing the lower tier X570 motherboards, I'm probably going to say that there's definitely very similar success regarding that as well too. So will this actually work on other X570 motherboards from other brands? It's definitely really up to them, to be honest. Not something I highly recommend that you would really depend on because again, number one, the benefits are not pretty, not so significant to be honest. You can actually see here, bus specs are down to PCI Express 3.0. This board obviously supports 4.0, but it is pretty processor dependent. So you are seeing a much, um, slower speed here, not taking advantage of the higher uh, tier 4.0 speed, Gen 4. That's perfectly fine. The motherboard works fine, CPU works great, and you can still benefit from, uh, let's say for example, uh, M2 SSD drives, you know, 
getting about 3,000, 3,500 3, megabytes per second, read speeds, et cetera, et cetera, and everything else that comes with it. But just something to keep in mind, since I definitely like exploring and experimenting with a bunch of uh, stuff that people say cannot be done, you know, in other words, Windows 7. Um, and uh, this definitely did cross my mind for some time. I had the CPU, I had the board, I have a couple of them. I decided to toss them together and see how it works out. So why am I using a first gen Ryzen CPU on this board here? Well, this is actually basically a guest PC, so it's hardly even used. I'm probably gonna be using it for future videos in terms of taking hardware out, installing whatnot, and of course, ultimately installing Windows 11 on it and seeing how that works out. With a date for release for Windows 11, well, I mean, how much can I possibly really throw in in a video, but I'm definitely gonna be doing some in thorough, intense, uh, just playing around with Windows 11. Some pluses I noticed, some minuses, etc., etc. So this will probably be a good candidate for it. So definitely look forward to seeing it right in a Ryzen 7 1700 CPU. And yes, I actually have messed with Windows 11 on this computer before, and it seems like it is working a-okay. So that's just as basically my little uh, reason here. I'm actually going to be getting my hands on a fourth-generation Ryzen 8-core CPU to put into this computer or possibly to another one and then just move that CPU into here, possibly a third generation eight core CPU. With uh, prices uh, coming down on Ryzen CPUs, finally, considering only it took me months and months just to get my hands on the 5900X, I'm actually welcoming that change, but I'm gonna see how low prices can go and I'm gonna hold off on purchasing an upgrade for this computer. After all, it's not hardly even used. But yeah, definitely let me know if you have any particular questions regarding this uh, process here. Uh, I really wish I can give you straight answers whether a specific X570 chipset based motherboard will support first gen CPUs. But, you know, unfortunately, unless I actually have it in my hands and someone tests it out, it's really hard to tell. Manufacturers probably will not, um, but probably probably discourage this and probably may not even inform you honestly uh, and I can't blame them if it actually does work or not I mean you, you also have to think they have a business mindset as well too so that's something to can think about anyway I really hope you enjoyed this uh, quick short video definitely shoot a like and subscribe I'll definitely be doing some more funny experiments like this later on maybe I even throw in the 1500 CPU see if it works I'm just gonna guess it probably does Pretty impressive motherboard that actually supports all generations of Ryzen CPU in one chipset board. I guess that's probably why it's a higher tier. The B550, I'm sure I had a couple of comments already if uh, that supports the, this particular CPU, and I'm gonna, probably gonna, just going to assume it probably doesn't. It doesn't even support second generation uh, um, Ryzen CPU, so it's probably not going to support first. Anyway, thanks again for watching, everyone, and as always, stay safe.